Quadruped rocking is a form of hip flexion that's oftentimes utilized, especially post-surgically. The thing that I like about it, well, there's a few things I like about it. One thing is it gives the patient independence. It allows them to get into hip flexion where it's relatively passive. And the other thing is they can kind of play with different variables that we'll be discussing here as well. You can kind of oftentimes get them into ranges that they oftentimes don't tolerate even passively. If you are going like this, knees shoulder width apart, back relatively flat, if they started getting some pinching, some options you can do is one thing you can do is just have them simply arch the back. So we have them go into a posterior pelvic tilt. So now he's in a posterior pelvic tilt and you can see now what you get is you get a little bit of posterior pelvic tilt so you move the ASIS away from the femur you get a little bit of a posterior nominate rotation bilaterally and you gain a little bit of uh, range for hip flexion so that's one option you can do to kind of help with that and so you can kind of see a close-up here you'll actually gain a little bit more hip flexion just because you're moving your more proximal surface which is your acetabulum away from your femur so that's one option so the other alternatives you can do are, so it depends on the person. So you can, again, you can start, and, and people are going to start with different widths of their knees and, and their feet apart. And I typically just kind of let them play with it a little bit. And so one option that I oftentimes like to do is just have them get into, um, so if we're, if we're doing it on the tables in the clinic, have them get their knees out wide. And so now what that gets them into a little bit more of a, more of an abducted and possibly externally rotated position more so more like a sumo squat and oftentimes patients tolerate this a little bit better they get a little bit less pinchy another option you can do is same keep their knees uh, abducted and then just have them externally rotate so i just have them bring their feet together obviously nobody would squat like this but your, your goal is not squat form in this particular case if it's post-surgical your goal is range of motion now if i am using this to see and it's not somebody that's post-surgical, and I'm trying all these different variations on squat form in a less loaded position, then I will I would never do something like this because I don't want to train that kind of a motion because that's how not how they're going to squat. Now I may have them extra rotate, I may have them have their feet out a little bit wider than they are in that position there, but the point being is this is more post-surgically just to allow them to get the range of motion. But if I am going to work on squatting form, I may go knee knees very wide and keep the feet in. But uh, the other thing is I may move the feet in just a little bit. And typically what I'll do is I'll just have them go out wide. If they feel really good there, I'll say, can you move your feet in? So they'll just play with their, I'll let them play back and forth with it. I'll have them bring their knees in a little bit or bring their feet in or kind of play with the combinations. So a lot of different ideas and different goals depending on is this somebody post-surgically? Is this somebody you're training uh, and teaching how to squat and or find an alternative to squatting position because they're having hip pain? Hopefully this information was helpful.